welcome to this Tutor to You topic video that looks at the changes in the London Docklands. This is part of Paper 2, Unit A, Urban Issues and Challenges. The London Docklands is an area in London's east end and covers 22 square kilometres, including parts of the boroughs of Tower Hamlets, Newham, Southwark, Lewisham and Greenwich. They are on a U-shaped section of the River Thames before it flows out to Essex and Kent. It is a former industrial area and has seen huge regenerations over recent decades. We are going to start off by thinking about the 19th century Docklands boom. The London Docklands have a long history. At the start of the 19th century, Britain saw a huge increase in trade with goods imported from the British Empire and the number of ships on the River Thames rose rapidly. This led to an issue with theft as people took advantage of boats getting stuck along very crowded parts of the river. This led to the construction of the West India Docks in 1802, which were built to provide secure warehouses and underground vaults along guarded quays. In 1805, London Docks opened at Wapping and the East India Docks opened in 1806. In 1828, St Catherine's Dock opened next to Tower Bridge. However, as more and more goods were imported, the docks needed to expand further. In 1855, Royal Victoria Dock opened, which had been dug deep out of marshland and was able to accommodate huge steamships coming in from India and parts of Africa. This expansion also saw a huge rise in factories and the number of workers needed to process imported tobacco, food, vegetables, grain and meat. In 1868, Millwall Docks opened, followed by Albert Dock in 1880, which you can see on the screen. These modern docks had railway lines for easy transport as well as refrigerated warehouse to preserve imported food. Much housing was also built around the Docklands for workers, of which there were 100,000 at the peak. And communities began to establish in places like Woolwich and Canning Town. Trade was so great that expansion continued down the river with the opening of Tilbury Docks in 1886. In 1909, the Port of London Authority was created to manage the London Docks and in 1921, they were renamed as the Royal Docks in recognition of their importance. However, while the 19th century was a boom time for the docks, the 20th century certainly wasn't. In 1926, a general strike happened across Great Britain. This had an impact on the Royal Docks as union members went on strike to fight for better working conditions and better living conditions, as at the time, much housing throughout the docks was described as slum housing. Throughout the Second World War, the docks were bombed heavily by the Germans who hoped that they could disrupt Britain's war effort by destroying its warehouses and factories. The second half of the 20th century saw the introduction of containerised cargo, which involved much larger ships that couldn't navigate down the Thames and the Royal Docks. So instead, large container ports were built much further down the river or along the coast. And most of the imported goods which would have arrived at London Docklands were processed at Tilbury Docks instead. Over time, the docks declined further and the last commercial vessel left the Royal Docks in December 1981, marking the closure of the docks and with it mass unemployment and derelict buildings such as the Millennium Mills pictured on the screen. Around 60% of people in the area lost their jobs, which led to a negative multiplier effect as people couldn't afford to use services such as shops, pubs and restaurants, so those closed down too. At the time, the cost of regeneration was so high that investors were put off. Let's move on to how redevelopment of the London Docklands has completely transformed this area. The London Docklands Development Corporation formed in 1981 to regenerate the derelict Docklands and throughout the 1980s and 1990s dramatically transformed the old warehouses into residential, commercial and light industrial spaces. At the heart of the redevelopment was Canary Wharf on the Isle of Dogs, which comprised of high-rise office blocks made of stone and glass, with one Canada Square in the centre, which is pictured on screen, which was London's tallest building from 1991 until 2012 when the Shard was built. The area became London's second financial district. There have been other notable developments during the transformation. In 1987, the Docklands Light Railway opened up, connecting some of London's neglected neighbourhoods with the London Underground. This was extended out to Beckton in the mid-1990s. The DLR, which is pictured on screen, has had a positive multiplier effect encouraging investment, which has transformed former derelict areas into vibrant communities. 
In the same year, London City Airport opened on the site of the former Royal Docks, with the former Central Wharf serving as the runway. The airport handles around 10,000 passengers each day, with 51 departures to more than 30 destinations across Europe. In 1999, the Jubilee Line extension on the London Underground opened, connecting Green Park in central London with the Docklands. And later that same year, the University of East London opened a new campus on the former Royal Albert Dock, which was the largest of its three campuses. In 2000, the Excel Centre opened up and is one of Europe's largest and most successful venues, hosting around 400 events annually, which draw in more than 4 million visitors. It has seen huge numbers of hotels, restaurants and bars opening up to cater for increased visitor numbers. In 2012, Transport for London opened its one kilometre cable car service, also known as the Dangleway, which is pictured on screen, connecting the Greenwich Peninsula and the O2 Arena to the Royal Victoria Dock near Excel. It was formerly known as the Emirates Airline as it was sponsored by Emirates, but it is currently sponsored by technology firm IFS. It acts as a convenient route across the river for commuters, but also as a tourist attraction. And finally, in 2022, Crossrail opened linking East London to West London by the new Elizabeth Line and is predicted to increase property prices by 25% close to stations along the route and encourage further regeneration, which will create thousands more jobs. So has it been successful? Well, the Docklands is considered one of the most successful regeneration projects in the world. More than 100,000 people now work in Canary Wharf, and this is predicted to rise to 200,000 in the future. These jobs are mainly in the financial sector, but there are also many jobs in admin and in some of the services that have popped up around the development to service those working in the financial sector. However, the majority of these jobs are done by commuters. Only 10% of jobs are taken by people living in the borough of Tower Hamlets, which is one of the UK's most deprived areas. And most of these jobs will be low paid service workers, such as cleaning staff and those working in hospitality. Gentrification of the area has also seen house prices increase dramatically, meaning that local people can't afford to rent or buy there, with rents for a three-bedroom converted warehouse property like the ones you can see on the screen ranging between two and a half to five and a half thousand pounds per month. That concludes this Tutor to You topic video focusing on the changes that have taken place in London Docklands. Thank you for watching.